Socrates says to his friend Phaedrus, where are you coming from and where are you going? Everything yeah. in my world is in the moment I put my, my mm -hmm. pen to paper, my brush to paper, that uh, everything's at stake. Yeah. What do you make of that? What, what is that about? One might hear the distinction between the life of the mind and this embodied life and think that they are separate things. Can you talk about the relationship between those two? What is subservience of mind? I think it's tyranny. So the opposite of freedom is, one of the opposites is tyranny. And so the, the American experiment, and I think the experiment in liberal education, is how do you avoid that tyranny? This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. What do you think he means by new birth of freedom? Inaugurating a new birth of freedom carries along with it the implication that something's happened to the, to the old. Why is this word right in there? That, that, yeah. that seems to be an affirmation yes. of this person's I being. Th I think this carries on the sort of rebellious and counterintuitive claim of the first quatrain, namely, that one should hurt. In a world where everything is beautiful, where everything is perfectly structured, which is what critics seems to want and, and has something to do with his tyrannical impulses, that's a world where thinking can't take place and therefore self-knowledge can't take place and therefore it's a world where there's, there's not anything like a human soul. What then is there? What do you care about? And he pauses and he replies, uh, the eternal present. Shall we test if mathematics is indeed a perfect language, or maybe the perfect language? Or at least is pointing that way. A right. universal language that compels mutually um, perfect assent between people, among people. That's a wonderful Without way. Without gaps of, of you know, cloudiness right. and misunderstanding. Right. So if the results of your measurements our probabilities. So what is that telling you about the, the being that you're looking at? And then he throws a stone into it and then watches the concentric circles move out. If the physical world were enough, you would just be staring infinitely into it. But that's not what it is. It's somehow the alteration of the physical yeah. world where you see your own mind reflected in the kind of literal, in that case, turbulence. Then at the end, five different strands of argument came together in a, in a moment, and I, re I, I remember laughing aloud, mm -hmm. le sort of leaning back, almost tumbled out of my chair, because the, the proof was like a joke. It was like a perfect joke. It was like the perfect um, Rube Goldberg yeah. machine where Things didn't seem to make any sense, and then suddenly, bang, they were all together as you couldn't possibly have expected. And the, the surprise is to show you a surprising order in things that seem disordered. That seems comical to me in the best way. Mm -hmm. It leaves us with the interesting proposition that love and logic, passion, and thinking are closely intertwined. When you describe it to me this way, I, it's like I'm looking in a mirror that I had, have been polished for a while. <laughs> that there's always been a dissatisfaction with a strictly Western, secular, materialist account of life and reality. The fear of the, the unknown may be the, the most powerful thing in our lives that we're always running from. And somehow for Socrates, suffers Zune, it's not about running away in fear, it's about embracing what we don't know. Um, it's love of the unknown rather than fear yeah, of the unknown. Yeah.